Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, Wachabah, Wachadar, Abba, Abba Nawa, Allah Hayah Nawa, Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai. All praises, honor, and glory. And thanks be to the Father, Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, for giving me a Rakaf of Dash, for to come back and do another video or lesson, or hopefully something that could be exhortation or ammunition or reproof. Okay. Um, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, and uh, Shalawan Wabarakim, Aman Bakiyar. Okay. And that's peace uh, to uh, bless blessings to the faithful elect on down uh, 141,000 men on down to the rest of the one third and uh, so with that I'm your brother Shower Yad and then we just want to get straight into it so the lesson I'm coming with uh, is uh, it's, it's basically who is salvation for and who is the savior sent to now we're just going to get straight into it So first and foremost, we got to understand that um, how to properly go into this. So we're just gonna go to the, go to the scripture. Scripture said best, right? Without any further ado, we're gonna uh, go to Romans 15 verse four, and it says. For whatsoever things were written, were written. So like Romans 15, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written, aforetime were written for our learning, that we that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay, so it says, Whatever things were written aforetime was written for our learning. So people always try to deny the and this is a lot of fake Christians and uh, so-called evangelists and all of these people who don't understand the scriptures and don't read them or actually deal with the scriptures at all. <clears throat> so they try to detach the Old Testament from the New Testament. And then even with that, it's still an incomplete Bible if you were to put the two together because you're missing an apocrypha. But that's a whole nother story. So this is a scripture to... to clearly tell us that the Old Testament, you can't have any other understanding without the things of foretime. You can't have any understanding uh, of the new or the current, right? Because they like to say the use of the New Testament as being the current, which is why the old, now we want to be literate, you know, at that moment they want to be literate or illiterate and act like old just means done away with, no more good. Okay? Now, uh, only now this scripture just it doesn't substantiate that if anything it substantiates the fact that you can't like I said have uh, understanding you know you can't properly stand in the, in the current right or assess things of your current without you know things before time what's the four time the New Testament the Old Testament so with that being said, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8. And it reads, because we could just go straight to the scriptures, but this is going to speak to both. It's going to show why we're going to start here. Isaiah, so properly, we should start with the Old Testament because the New Testament actually backs the Old Testament as we go through this, simply breaking down who's the salvation for, who's the Savior sent to. That savior is to bring that salvation. So it's the same, you know, it's just a plan of words. So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8, it says, The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it had lighted upon Israel. So once again, from the top, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8, it says, 
Yahweh sent a word into Jacob. So what is the word? The word is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly and arrogantly and just stupidly just continue, repeatedly calls Jesus, you know, uh, that he's actually the word. And we're going to prove that real quick. And it says, so Yahweh sent a word, which is Yahweh Shai, the son, the Messiah, the Savior, into Jacob. And it had lighted upon Israel. So the Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it had lighted upon Israel. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and prove that real quick. Who that word is. So I'm sure everybody should know the word was made flesh. It says, John, St. John chapter 1, verse 14. It said, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as, so it's going to tell us right now. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So once again, John chapter 1 verse 14. It says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The Israelites, the disciples, all Israelites. And the rest of the Israelites. The glory. It says, The glory as we beheld, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that word was made flesh among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Now we're going to go to Matthew. So that's talk. That's the only begotten of the Father. So when you begat, that means you bring a, a seed, you know, not necessarily a seed, but you bring your offspring, you know. Okay, let's see. The reason I say that, you should understand the most high is the spirit. So we're spirits before we're bodily creatures, okay. Uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 3, and we're going to go to verse 16. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. To prove that that only begotten of the, for those who don't know, the only begotten of the Son, or the Father is the Son. Right? It says, Matthew chapter 3, verse, we're going to start at 16. It says, and Yahweh Shai, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lightning upon him. It says, verse 17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. So that's the only begotten of the Father, the Son, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. All right, so Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8. Yahweh sent a word into Jacob, and it had lighted upon Israel. That word is Yahweh Shai, the Lord being the Most High, Yahweh sent the word, which is Yahweh Shai, unto Jacob, and it lighted upon Israel. Israel, Jacob, interchangeable for Israelites. Now, we're going to go ahead and go straight into it. We're going to go to Acts chapter 5. We're going to get one. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna let the sun set out his mouth too. Let's go to that. Uh, no, who is salvation for? Because that word is Yahweh Shai, right? He said it was sent unto Jacob. That's it. That's the Old Testament, right? All right, Acts chapter 5. And we're going to go to verse 30. And it reads... We're going to start at uh, verse 30. The God of our fathers, so the power of our fathers, 
So this is Peter talking to other Israelites, obviously, because Yahweh's only been the power of the Israelites. Let's prove that real quick. Amos chapter 3. This is one of my favorite scriptures, and I don't pull it that much. Amos chapter 3. Second. chapter 3 verse 1 and it reads it says hear this word that the Lord has spoken unto you O children of Israel against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt saying you only have I known of all the families of the earth Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. So that's that. So Acts chapter, back to it. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. It says, well, 30. The God of our fathers raised, so there you go, only the Israelites, raised up Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hung on the tree. Because the Israelites, we, our ancient ancestors are we, because we're back on the earth, right? We delivered the Lord up. Well, you wicked niggas, you delivered the Lord up, you know, to, to, to the Romans, the Edomites, to be, to, be, to be crucified, right? So, Peter's an Israelite talking to other Israelites. He said, the God or the power of our Father, which is the Most High. And he just told us in Amos chapter 3, verse, uh, verses 1 through 2. He only knew the Israelites, right? Period. It says... Verse 31. So whom ye who is who ye, whom ye slew and hung on the tree. It says, Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and, re and forgiveness of sins. Verse 31. Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. And to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So the Savior was only, he's only, it's only been for, um, it's only for the Israelites, right? That's it. Now we're gonna get some more scriptures to back it up real quick, but that's pretty much the point, you know. Acts chapter thirteen, verse twenty-three, and it reads, it says, "Of this man see have." God or Yahweh, according to his pr promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. So there you go, man. And then we're going to jump to verse 26. It says, Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, who and whosoever among you fears God, to you is the word of this salvation, of this salvation. Okay, men and brethren. Who are the men and brethren? Romans chapter 9, verse 3. I, for I could wish that myself were a curse for, for, from Christ or from Hamashiach. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Okay? That's that. Let's get some more. So, so far the New Testament is bagging up the Old Testament. Right? Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might have the adoptions of sons. So, with that redemption comes saving, you know? That's it. To redeem them that were under the law. Only people that were under the law, he just told us, the only people he knew was Israelites. 
But just in case that would end enough for you, Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with.